Now that I've got the audio issues resolved, I can do a follow-up to my last uh, video. The advocates, the proponents for having assault weapons available to the general public will generally rely on the notion that uh, they represent a militia. So what does the Second Amendment say? It starts off by saying a well-regulated, a well-regulated militia. So under that regulation, there's a number of things that can be done. And I mentioned that on the last video, liability. The more powerful the weapon, the more liability they have to have, liability insurance. And it could be, it doesn't have to be government run, it could be just private insurance. After all, the insurance companies don't mind having business come in their way. And also something such as uh, an excise fee, uh, a tax, or whatever. The more powerful the weapon, the more the, the gun buyer has to pay. Now this is not for generating revenue, though so that revenue can be put to good use. It's more for a dampening effect. Now this is not exclusive of gun bans. You can ban the assault weapons and the paraphernalia in addition uh, to my proposals. On the issue of school security, armed security, I hate to agree with the NRA, but because of their lobbying efforts flooding our violent society with guns for all, that is any gunman can get their hands on one easily. You got no choice but to have armed security. Not in the classroom, but someone on the outside. And for the for the you know, giving consideration for the kids, it should be something that's uh, um, concealed. They don't need to see somebody walking around with packing heat. So, funding, fine. If you buy a firearm, you have to pay. The rest of us who have to deal with this stuff, who have no part of it, why the hell should we pay? You pay.